Hello everyone, welcome to or back to the new grid. I'm Kyle and in today's video we've got full self-driving beta 11.3.2. So we've got the latest single stack build and I took it through several highways and all kinds of different scenarios, put it through about 50 miles of testing. So I've got some diverging diamonds to show you. I've got some dual lane and single lane roundabouts. I've got getting on and off of the interstate. I've got some other things too, just to kind of show you how it's performing so that you can know what it's like. So with that, let's get started with roundabouts. So here's the first single lane roundabout. It does still slow down entering it, but it didn't seem like as slow at slowing down. So it took a while to slow down. It slowed down fairly good and then went to about one mile an hour and then proceeded through it since there was nobody there. So this did fairly good. It still has that awkward slowdown there. You probably would be going at least 10 miles an hour entering it if there was no one there. But overall, the path was very smooth and performed fine in that one. So now here's another one that we're approaching. And as we get into it, it slows down about to the one mile an hour. And then it starts to creep forward. But at that point, it then realizes, hey, this fan is going to go into our path. So at first it really wasn't watching it. I think it suspected that it was going to turn off and then it realizes, Hey, it's going to go in front of us. So it did just fine at that and going around the roundabout at about 17 miles an hour, 18 to so exit. So it was really smooth and very good feel for how that went through that roundabout. So single lane roundabouts were pretty good, but let's see how a double lane roundabout performs. So, we basically start going into this roundabout. We stop pretty much so like we did before in the single lane roundabouts, and then we start creeping forward. However, we creep forward and a car is entered and we're kind of in the first lane. So I go ahead and press the accelerator once that car is cleared so that we can continue into that. But then when we start to exit this roundabout, it doesn't quite detect that there's two lanes exiting the roundabout in time. So it starts getting over into the first lane to then exit this roundabout. So that's a little bit of the detection side's not quite working right to see that, hey, there's actually two lanes that go out of this. And because it was marked where we got on, we could take that route and go through that lane. So here's another roundabout that's kind of interesting and we basically start going through it. It's really slow, really hesitant because these are like interchange roundabouts and then continues going through this. Now this interchange actually has a roundabout this goes into again. So now we're basically going through this next set of the roundabout. We have an awkward turn signal there where you really couldn't turn anyways, but we do continue to get through that portion and then this next roundabout that's also double lane and it does slow down slightly because it sees that car coming off of the interstate there and i did press the accelerator again there but other than that it did make it through those roundabouts it was just that awkward hey there's a car that's coming in path of us so we're kind of slowing down where really we need to be getting out of the way now we get into one of the more interesting places. So it really starts at this light. If you can see, there's a lot of people in that left turn lane. You can't see as good as I can, but there's nobody behind me and there's a lot of people in that left turn lane. So that's something I'm thinking, well, I wonder if this lane ends somewhere. So that's what I'm thinking at this moment. So let's speed up a little bit and I'll show you what happens down a little bit further. So then finally it gets down to where it basically that lane ends. All we have is one sign that says the lane must turn right, but notice the turn arrow. It's got a left turn arrow going to make this right turn into here. So it knew it was in the right turn lane. It knew that it actually wanted over in the left lane, but it couldn't because cars were blocking it. So it, it still had its left turn signal on, but the path planner already had planned that it needed to go right through this area to cut off so i'm going to fast forward through this and show you that it basically does make it out of here and gets back onto that road again now's a good time to hit that like button so as you can see it, there's a car coming by once that car goes by it proceeds it's back out on the road and continuing to go to the planned destination 
So that's not the only time I've had lane issues. So here it basically wants to get into this lane. As you can see in the path planner, it thinks that it needs in that turn only lane, but that's because it's kind of planning for that curve and doesn't realize that there are lines kind of separating that lane. And because we're now already over it, it decides that it needs to get into that lane. And then it does it yet again at this other lane. And in both cases, I obviously took over and was able to report it to Tesla. So this was something that really impressed me with full self-driving beta. This is my first time trying to take it on the interstate. And in previous builds, we'd set up and get into the left turn lane and proceed that way. But in this case, we actually get into the right left turn lane. So that's something that's really good. We make it through this intersection, which did very, very well. So then it's getting into this right lane, it makes it its way onto the interstate or on-ramp, and going through this on-ramp, it felt very good. It felt like it was going the right speed, it knew how to adjust to the curvatures of it to change its speed, so like you can see, it's kind of speeding up down the straightaway, and then it starts slowing down for this final curve before getting on to the interstate, and that really impressed me, the confidence of it doing that. Now. Here it stays in this merge lane. So you should have already merged, put your blinker on, got over, but beta just hangs out in this lane until it ends and then just gets over, which is fine. There's no cars coming, but that's not an ideal case for what you should be doing when getting on the highway. So again, here's another example of it getting on the interstate. It does very well at keeping its speed and then it aggressively speeds up to get up to speed. I do bump my speed up a little bit, but that was outside of the point of this. But um, again, here's the issue where it just continues in that merge lane until it ends and then just shifts over. So it doesn't even try to get over beforehand. That's something that Beta definitely needs to address. So again, some of the highway stack still isn't perfect. As you can see, there's a new lane opens up for getting off of this interstate onto another one. And it's clearly marked overhead that just that one lane gets onto that interstate. Now, however, Beta somehow thinks that it needs to be in this lane and continues going on. It puts on its turn signal like it's gonna turn and get onto this. It even starts telling me the next navigation once we're on this road. Now, one thing I'm thinking is it basically splits into two lanes right when we're getting to that point. And I think Beta's thinking, okay, it's got two lanes. It's told that it's got two lanes. And because it doesn't, then Beta just continues going on thinking that it is in the right lane. It, which would be the right lane. You'd want to stay in that left lane because that just merges right onto that interstate. And this has worked in the past builds. So that's something that has changed a bit in full self-driving V11 that Tesla needs to address. And I did send them some feedback on that. It does, however, end up rerouting to get off at the next exit, which really isn't that far out of the way. They both would have gotten me to that same point, fairly close to the same. But this actually gave me a new unique opportunity to test out. So we're a little jerky going into this diverging diamond to exit the highway. And so we come up to the stoplight. It's properly shown as a stoplight. There's traffic now crossing over. And then it decides it's too confused. So it tells me to press the accelerator when it can continue on. So once it's open, I press the accelerator and it continues on its way. So that other than me having to just tap that accelerator, it worked perfectly going through that portion of the diverging diamond. So while I'm here, I decide I might as well try going through the diverging diamond a few other ways. So this is the first case. It decides it needs to get over lane to follow her out, which that's okay because we are going to turn pretty soon after. But then it decides that it needs to get all the way over into the turn lane. So I've got to take over. So maybe I need to try a different destination point, but I am able to re-engage it mid route here and it's doing fairly good. It navigates through this portion of it. The light does turn yellow, but it's still plenty of time to go through it. I wouldn't have stopped myself, but then it gets confused by that lane marking there and tries to take me into the other lane because 
that lane line was showing how people could exit like I had just shown you and not how people should continue through that. So that gave it a little bit of confusion there. So then let's conclude this diverging diamond bit with it getting on the interstate going through this diverging diamond. So this it has traffic to follow, the light had just turned green, and it continues into the diverging diamond correctly in the correct lane, and it instantly gets over to get into the lane to go into the interstate and does that very well. And it does have to contend a little bit with traffic going on, but they're a little bit further ahead of us. It starts accelerating going on to this on-ramp and this is also the one time that it actually uses its turn signal to get over out of that merge lane which it needed to do because that ends up becoming a exit onto the interstate so that it did very nicely so now on to the parking lot test and it really starts back here again this is way earlier than I would get into the turn lane, but we put our turn signal on, get in it. It's a straight and turn lane, so that's actually fine for it to do. Before, it would actually get over into the left turn lane here at times, so much bigger improvement over the last build. And so now we approach this intersection, we creep up there. You notice how it kind of rounds out this corner to kind of show you how it's going around it. I really like that because that's a very aggressive corner to take there and it does perfectly going through that turn. So we're doing f fine, going fine, and then we're going to be getting into this left turn lane. So this left turn lane, all of a sudden a Jeep comes around the corner, takes it wide. We actually move over out of the lane slightly to compensate for that Jeep making that wide turn. So another very good thing going on here. Now, we're kind of in a weird situation here. We're out maybe a little further than we should be, although the way the creep line's drawn, it actually looks fairly decent. But at this point, with all these cars and whatnot, I end up just disengaging and going when I'm able to go right away because I figured I might as well just go, get out of there sooner rather than later and waiting for Beta to get through that. So that's really pretty impressive. So overall, I'm very impressed with how full self-driving beta performs on the interstate and everywhere. It just has a few really weird situations that it gets into, but they're definitely fixable. I do have a lot of other videos planned to make for this version of beta, so please consider subscribing to my channel, liking this video if you find it helpful, and you can follow me at the new grid io on twitter too if you'd like so please stay tuned for more content coming soon